Hi, boys and girls. My name is Miss Jennifer, and I'm a teaching artist in the Pace Art Program. I am here to do a fun art lesson with you today. I'm so glad that you could join me. Today we'll be doing a social living based art lesson. Our lesson today will have to do with things that you've been learning about with your classroom teacher. For this lesson, we will be talking about community leaders, also known as community helpers. We will be taking a virtual field trip today to see a local veterinarian. We will be learning about veterinarians and why they are important in the lives of animals. We will be creating a drawing of a cat today. The supplies that you will need today will be a white sheet of paper, a variety of crayons, a black or brown marker. Whichever one you have will be just fine. So we will be using lines, shapes, and colors for our lesson today. We will also be learning about warm and cool colors. We will learn how to create a border on the top and bottom of our paper. We'll be focusing on short and long lines and we'll review things that we have been learning in our past lessons. So today, as I said, we're going to be talking about community leaders and community helpers. So I want you to think about what is a community leader? Hmm. Think about it. This is something that you have been learning with your classroom teacher. Well, if you said a community leader is a person who works in our community, you are correct. Community leaders are also known as community helpers, and they help us to make our lives easier by providing goods and services that we need in order to live. So what are some community leaders? Think about it. What are some people that help us in our community? You know what? I want you to turn and I want you to tell your neighbor what you are thinking. Good job. I heard some good answers. Well, if you said police, police are definitely good community helpers. They help to protect us so that we stay safe. They also help us if we get a flat tire, they'll stop and they'll help us. Another community leader is a fireman. And what do firemen do? Hmm. Well, if you said they help to put out fires, you are correct. Good job. Now, there is someone in your classroom that is a community leader or helper that helps you learn. Who do you think that might be? Hmm. If you said teacher, you are correct. Your teacher helps you learn. Now, think about when you go to eat lunch. There is someone in there that also helps you. And that is a cafeteria worker. Good job. They help you to put food in your plate. They also cook the food that you eat. So they are there to help you. Good job. What about a doctor? Do you think doctors are community helpers or leaders? Of course they are. They help us to feel better when we are not feeling well. And there are so many other community leaders that we have in our community. I want you to take some time and I want you to think about one more community leader that you know in your community. And I want you to take some time and I want you to share it with your neighbor. Let's do that now. Very good. Nice answers. Well, today, the community helper or leader that we're going to be talking about is a veterinarian. Now, what does a veterinarian do? Well, a veterinarian is a doctor for animals. And veterinarians not only take care of your pets, but they take care of other small animals. They take care of farm animals. They take care of zoo animals. And they also take care of animals in the wild. So veterinarians are also called vets. So have you ever had to take your pet to the vet? I have. All right. So we are going to take a quick little virtual field trip, which means that we're going to do it right here on our video to a veterinarian. We are going to visit with Dr. Bill Lambert, which owns Evangeline Veterinary Clinic in Broussard. 
and we are going to see what he does in order to help animals. Hi boys and girls. I, as you can see, am with a veterinarian. This veterinarian is a family friend of ours. His name is Dr. Bill Lambert. And as we talked about, veterinarians take care of animals. As you can see, Dr. Lambert is taking care of my cat. He came over to see Doc to get weighed, and he's really, really heavy. And he's also listening to his heart. So you can see that he is checking his heart with a stethoscope. Stethoscope uh, has the head, and we listen to the, 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 the chambers of the heart. And, and we also listen to the lung, and to try to make sure that animals have good healthy heart just like we do. This cat, that was a good word. So Doc is saying that my cat is pretty healthy. Veterinarians not only check to make sure that your pets are healthy, but they also give them immunizations or shots when they're babies. They help us if they get fleas to make sure that we get rid of the fleas. And they just kind of keep track of your pet as your pet gets older by making sure that your pet is healthy and has its needs met. Now that you've watched the video and you've seen what Dr. Lambert does in order to help animals, you have a better idea of what a veterinarian's job is in our community. So how many pets do you have? Well, I have three cats. I'm sure that some of you might have dogs, turtles, lizards, fish. Those are all pets. Some of you might not have any pets, but maybe your friends have pets. Maybe you've seen pets um, in the pet store. So whether you have pets or you don't have pets, the important thing is that we know that veterinarians are there for, to help with animals. Maybe when you get older, you'll have a pet. Maybe one day you'll be visiting a veterinarian. So I'm ready to start drawing. Now that we've learned about community helpers, community leaders, veterinarians, and pets and other animals. I am going to be working on drawing a cat with you today. And I think that you're going to have a lot of fun drawing. So let's go ahead and get our paper. And I have my paper so that it is vertically um, today. If you decide you want your paper horizontally, that is fine. But I will draw mine vertically. Put your paper in front of you. I'm going to use a black marker. You could use a black marker or a brown marker. It's really up to you. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing our cat first. Hi. So as you can see here, I have pictures of cats. Are all of these cats the same? Hmm. No, they are not. What is different about these cats? Well, they're all different colors. As you can see here, some black and white. This one's kind of orange and yellow. They're different colors, but they are also different sizes. Some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. <clears throat> if we have small cats, what are those cats called? Kittens, good job. So we could have grown cats and we could have kittens. Now, are cats' eyes all the same color? Hmm. No, they are not. Here we have one that's green, sort of uh, blue. Here we have one that's really, really, really yellowish green. And so cats also have different colors. But the one thing that they have that is the same is they are all cats. Did you know that tigers are also cats? Yes, so they are cats in a zoo also. But these cats are cats that we usually have around our house, around our farm, or maybe even as a pet. So I want to start by drawing my cat's head first. And when I draw my cat's head today, I'm going to sort of start with this shape. What is that shape? If you said a circle, you are correct. It could also be like a long oval. But we're going to add the little chin part. And if you look here, our chin kind of goes down and around. So his little chin kind of goes down and around. 
down and around. And so then we're going to add down and around to make his little chin. We are going to be drawing our cat's head in the middle of our paper today. So let's point to the middle of our paper. Now I'm going to go about this far from the top. So here's the top and I'm going to put a dot. So let's leave about this much space. All right, good job. And then at the bottom, I'm going to leave a little bit more space. So notice here's the top and here's the bottom. And I'm going to put a dot about right here. This is going to be the top of his head. This is going to be the bottom of his chin. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to go down and around. And let's stop about right here. And I'm going to connect the top and I'm going to do the same thing around this way. And then stop. Notice I'm leaving a little part of it <clears throat> at the bottom that I did not draw. That is where we're going to start to go down and around using our curved line and we now make his chin. So go ahead and do that. You might not want to draw your cat's head too small because today we are going to be making um, different parts of our cat and we're going to be coloring our cat in a special way today. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to go right to the middle of his head, right here. What would I make here, boys and girls? His nose. So about right here, we're going to make a straight line. Now our straight line is laying horizontally, which means that it is laying down. And so here I go, here's my line. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make a dot right down at the bottom, leaving a space. We're working on our cat's nose. Now if you look at his nose, his nose is shaped sort of like an upside down triangle. Good job. Now, instead of going down to a point, what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to make a curve and back up. Down, make a curve and back up. And there is his nose. We're going to go ahead and make his mouth next. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a straight line and then a curved line run underneath, just like this for his mouth. If you look here, he has a straight line and then he has a curve for his mouth. Now what am I missing on his face? Hmm. If you set his eyes, you are correct. We're going to make one on the left side and one on the right side. So we're going to think about the left side first, which is this side of your paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a curved line and another curved line and we're going to connect it together. Here we go. Start here and go curved line and connect it together. Now let's do the same thing on the right side. So this was the left side. Let's do it on the right side. Here we go. Curved line and curved line. They don't have to be exactly the same because believe it or not, our eyes are not exactly the same. We, we pretty much have one smaller than the other. Then we're going to draw this shape in the middle. Boys and girls, what shape did I just draw? A circle. Awesome. Inside of his eye here, there is a circle. But notice something. Normally when we make an eye, we usually put a dot. But for a cat, a cat has sort of like an oval in their eye. So instead of a circle today, we're making some ovals, just like this, some ovals. Because cats have sort of ovals in the inside of their eyes. Good job. Your pictures are looking great. Now, I need something on the side of his face that sort of starts from the inside of his face and comes out. What do you think those might be? Hmm. If you said whiskers, you are correct. And cats use their whiskers to sort of feel around. And so, here it goes. So there's one. And they usually have three on each side. So one, two, three. And I just drew those on the right side of my cat's face. And then now on the left side, I'm going to do the same thing. One, two, and three. So now my cat has whiskers. Let's count them together. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. He has six whiskers. Very good. Now I want to move to the top of his head. What does my cat have on the top of their heads? If you said ears, you are correct. Now watch this. To make the cat's ear, we're going to go curve going this way on the left side and curve going on the right side. So here we go. One on one side, curve and curve and then curve and then curve. Now we're going to do the same thing again. This um, ear right here is sort of large. But we're going to make another one on the inside. No, we're not making two ears, but on the inside of a cat's ear, there is a, an opening inside of his ear. And so we're going to do that again. So curve and curve right on the inside. So we have one on the outside. We have one on the inside, just like this. Now, Miss Jennifer made her ears a little bit long on my cat. You can make shorter ears if you would like. Right. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make my cat's body. And to make my cat's body, I'm going to use a curved line. But before I do that, I want to mark off the bottom of my paper because we're going to be making something at the bottom of our paper today. So what I want you to do, I want you to go about like this much in the bottom of your paper and you're going to draw a straight line horizontally across the bottom of your paper. And while we're doing that, you know what? Let's do the same thing to the top. Let's draw a line, straight line, horizontally across the top of our paper. Let's do that now. Good job. All right, so going back to our curve, here, I'm going to start about right here, and I want to put a curve on the left side. Now, notice, this curve faces this way. My next one's going to face this way, and I'm going to put another one right here on this side. Now, that's making my cat's body. This is a curve on this side and a curve on that side. Good job. So, would you say that my cat's whiskers are the long lines or short lines? Hmm. I think they are long lines. Awesome. Would you say that this line from his nose to his mouth is a long line or a short line? Hmm. Well, it is a short line. Awesome. So, long lines and short line. And now, we want to draw his feet. To draw his feet, we're simply going to do a curve line. Curve here and we have two feet on a cat and curve here. Now talking about our long and short lines, now we're going to make short lines and we're going to make one here, one here, one here, and one here. What do you think I just made on my cat? Hmm. I made his toes. Very good. I made his toes. And so now we have our cat's Body. But our cat has something super long on him, and that would be his tail. Awesome. I'm going to draw his tail on the left side, but if you want to draw his tail on the right side, you could do that too. And we're going to start about right here, and I want to make a long tail. And you know what? Oop, I ran out of the paper on the side. That's okay. Just go off the side and then come back on right here. And there I go. I have my cat's tail. Now, if you want to um, maybe put some zigzag lines on your cat's tail, you can. If we look at this cat right here on his body, he sort of has some like zigzag little patterns. And so if you want to do that with your marker, you can. Or maybe you could even do that later with your crayons. Maybe you want your cat to have spots. So maybe you could put spots like this on your cat. If you look here, this cat, cat has a white spot. And so I think I want to add maybe a little bit more here on my cat. All right, and so there's my cat. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to work on the top and bottom of my paper. We're going to call those borders. Let's say it together, border. 
one more time, border. When we decide to make like a frame around a picture, we usually call that a border. So here we go. If I make a frame around my picture, just like this, the outside here is called the border. But for this picture, we're going to put a border on the top and a border on the bottom. Now in these borders, we're going to use some of our shapes. We could use our circles, our squares, our rectangles. What's another shape that we could use, boys and girls? Hmm. A triangle. Good job. A diamond or a rhombus can also be used. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to draw our shape. So here I'm drawing a triangle. Do we have to draw just one shape? Mm, no. You could draw maybe two different shapes if you want. So maybe I could draw a circle, then maybe another triangle, maybe a circle here, and maybe a triangle here. Now notice, not all of my triangles are facing in the same direction because you can turn the shape around and it's still that shape. So let's do the same thing to the bottom. So here we go. And I think I'm going to do mine a little differently here. Maybe more triangles and not as many circles on the bottom. So now we have a border with different shapes. And I did something else. I ended up making the pattern without even knowing it. Triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle. Triangle, triangle, circle, triangle, triangle. Hmm. So maybe you could even make patterns if you want on your picture. Maybe that's something that you can do later. And so there we go. So now we have our cat drawn. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to talk about color. Now, color, as we know, we see on all of the crayons that we have, there are lots of different colors. But something that is very important in art is that we have two sets of colors. We have colors that are known as warm colors. Let's say it together, warm colors. Now warm colors are colors that you usually find on the sun. So I like to tell my boys and girls, think about the sun when you think about warm colors. And so a warm color would be orange. Another warm color could be yellow. And another one could be red. So if we look at this, we have red, yellow, and orange. These are warm colors. They are all colors that we see on the sun. We see a yellow sun, sometimes with maybe a little orange on that sun, and sometimes even a little red. So red, yellow, and orange are warm colors. If you look here, I have the colors right next to each other, red, orange, and yellow. These are our warm colors. So we're gonna be coloring with warm colors today. Maybe you could color your cat with your warm colors. All right, so what are our warm colors, boys and girls? Let's say it together. Red, orange, and yellow. Good job. Now, we have another set of colors, and those colors are blue, oops, purple, and Miss Jennifer dropped the color, and here I am, and green. So we have blue, purple, and green. These are our cool colors. Let's say it together. Cool colors. Hmm, I kind of like the way that sounds. Cool colors. Well, I like to think about the ocean. We have blue water. We have green seaweed, which are the plants that are in the water. And we also have purple coral. And so blue, green, and purple remind me of water. And I know that water is kind of cool. And so these are our cool colors. Now, putting them together, here is my green, my blue, and my purple. These are my cool colors. So again, here are my warm colors, and here are my, guess what, cool colors. I heard you guys saying it to me, it's cool colors. And so we're gonna use those when we are coloring today. 
I'm going to start off first and I'm going to color my cat. And my cat's going to be warm colors. And so for my warm colors, of course, I know that yellow, orange, and red are colors that I will use on my cat today. All right, so I'm going to start off first and I want to color my cat's face orange. Remember, we're only using red, yellow, and orange. So decide what color that you want to color your cat. And so go ahead, pick the colors that you want. Maybe out of those three colors, I'm gonna color his ears red, just like this. Maybe I can color his nose yellow. All right, and the cool thing about this is you can also even go back and you can sort of mix those colors so maybe my cat is more of an orange-yellow kind of color, just like this cat. Maybe the inside of my cat's ears might be orange. Awesome. How about the inside of his ears? Could I use my blue, green, or purple for that? Well, no, because we are only using warm colors for our cat. So maybe my cat's eyes could be orange just like this all right what about my cat's body what color could my cat's body be hmm well if i look at my three colors ah uh, i think i could probably use red because i already used my orange and yellow on my cat's face and so maybe my cat's body will be red now miss jennifer's coloring hers a little quickly just because I want you to kind of get an idea of where you could put some of those warm colors on your cat. But I want you to take more time coloring when you get a chance. Remember, we can always color certain parts of it darker. Remember, pressing hard, pressing soft on our paper. So now I'm pressing a little bit harder on my crayon to make it a little bit darker. Now, another thing that you could do if you want, I could take the orange and where I made those zigzag marker lines, I can maybe color some of that with my orange or my yellow. All right, so next are his feet. And I think I'm going to use some yellow for his feet. Now, could you put both of his feet different colors? Of course, we could be creative if we would want. You could add some orange, you could add some red, it's really up to you. And what color do you think we can make his tail? Hmm. How about, let's make it yellow. So a big yellow tail, just like this. All right, and I can go back, and this time maybe I can use my red for my zigzags on my cat's tail. Maybe I could even add some red with my yellow if I would like. So there is my warm color cat. Now the next colors I want are my cool colors. So those are my blue, purple, and green. And I think I want to, you know what? I think for my background right here, between my cat here, I'm going to put some green on this side, just like this. All right, so on my left side, I put some green. Now maybe on the middle part, maybe I just want to put some blue just like this. Now, green, blue, and what can I put on this side, on the right side? If you said purple, you are correct. So I could actually put purple on this side. Again, Miss Jennifer's coloring quickly, but you could take your time to color yours. And then here, we would use our cool colors again. We could color in maybe all of our triangles on the end, could be green. Maybe the middle one could be purple. If I have green and purple, what other color do I need for my cool colors? Blue, and here I can color in my blue. And I could do the same thing to the top. I could also maybe even use my purple to color in the rest of my border. Remember the top part and the bottom part are called your border. All right, and you can continue coloring the one on the top. Today, we learned about community leaders or community helpers. We learned about the job 
that a veterinarian does in helping animals in our community. We drew a picture of a cat. We focused on warm and cool colors. I want you to take some time and I want you to share your drawing with others. Maybe you can take some time and you can add a few things to your drawing. Maybe you could even try to draw a different animal using warm and cool colors to color it. Until next time, have fun making art.